All right. What is up, tycoons? What's up, traders? We're going to look at Southwest Airlines. All right. This one is a viewer request actually for LUV. Uh, we're going to break down LUV. All right. Um, on the daily chart, go over the structure that I'm looking at right now and some of the key levels. All right. We're also going to use today's sponsor, Simply Wall Street. There's a link in the description or uh, a, the pinned comment down below. You guys can get a 14 day free trial and up to 40 percent off for the first 100 people that join. It's a great platform to, um, you know, get some fundamental analysis for some stocks. If you're like me and you're not an expert on fundamental analysis and reading earnings reports and all of that, um, you know, Simply Wall Street is going to be there to break things down for you guys very nicely and also give you guys some nice graphs um, and, you know, charts as well to really help visualize it for you too on top of just the numbers. So we'll be using them to check out all of these different things about the company from a fundamental standpoint. As always, the content provided on this channel is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. Trading in stocks, bonds, commodities, and crypto involve a significant risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. So be sure to read through the full disclaimer. Now, when a, from a risk to reward standpoint, okay, um, some of the rewards you're looking at when you look at Southwest Airlines is it's trading at about 43.9% below their estimate of its fair value and earnings are forecast to grow 27.47% per year and earnings grew by 12.9% over the past year. Now, on the risk standpoint, um, their dividend of 2.34% is not well covered and there's a high level of non-cash earnings. Um, when you look at the price to earnings ratio versus its fair ratio, it is expensive based on that, okay, being that it's at 27.8 versus the fair PE ratio would be around 21.4. Um, but when you take a look at the share price versus its fair value, all right, uh, it's right around about 43.9% undervalued with a fair value of 54.92. Um, based on an estimate using a discounted cash flow model. Now, the earnings growth rate is at 27.5% with an EPS of 28.7%. All right, future ROE, 19.9%, revenue growth rate, 62 and the airline's earning growth at 29.3%. Now, the price to earnings ratio versus the industry, again, you can see here that um, the PE ratio is a little bit higher, or actually it's much higher than some of the industry standards in the global airlines industry. Uh, so you do have to be cautious and aware of that, all right, from that perspective. Uh, and when you take a look at the volatility, um, the volatility is actually nice, okay? Love LUV is less volatile than 75% of U.S. stocks over the past three months, and its weekly volatility of 4% has been stable over the past year, and it's actually below the industry volatility and the average market volatility. So um, you know, not an extremely volatile stock here. It's got a 78% debt to equity ratio, 2.3% uh, dividend yield. Now the shareholder returns in the past seven days have been 3%, but over the past year, it's down 29%. So it has underperformed the U.S. airlines industry as a whole, which returned negative 7.5% over the past year. And it's underperformed the U.S. market, which returned 2.1% over the past year. Now, are we potentially seeing a bottom in some of these travel stocks? Okay. Um, you know, we have LUV, the airline here. We also have Royal Caribbean, Carnival Cruise Lines. Um, some of these travel related stocks uh, do seem to potentially be trying to put in a bottom. Now, whether that's a short term bottom just to go higher and give a dead cap bounce and potentially make new lows, we will have to see. Um, but for now, you know, we are st starting to see some of these travel related plays um, you know, see some sympathy from investors. Now, maybe it's a rotation out of tech that's been really booming and into some of these other plays. Uh, we'll just have to see a little bit further. But to me, on the daily chart, it does look like we put in a, uh, a bottom to a five-wave structure, right? Markets typically move in three-wave and five-wave structures. And we got a nice one, two, three, four, five here. All right, we established a nice little demand zone. And we have this nice rounded bottom forming here, okay? Now, um, I typically look for, you know, a rounded bottom or a rounded top as a topping or bottoming signal, right? You can see over here, nice rounded top, rounded bottom, rounded top, rounded bottom, rounded top, and a rounded bottom here. So ultimately, we need to break above 31.22. That's really when we're going to be bullish above there. And the reason being is because that is our 61.8% retracement level, right? And if you're not familiar with the FIBs, you use those because nothing moves in a straight line down and nothing moves in a straight line up. 
Rather, you get a move up retracement continuation higher or a move down retracement continuation lower. And it's useful for identifying that trend continuation, right? You can see we had this move down here, then we retraced up towards our 61.8% level, and then we continued that trend downwards, and then we retraced up again near that 50 and 61.8% retracement levels and continued that downtrend. So for us to get any type of a short-term reversal and head up to the $33 area, all right, what we need to do is we need to break above 31.22 and flip that to support from resistance. Because not only can you use the FIBs to identify that trend continuation up or down, you can also use it to spot reversals. If you move down, retrace, consolidate, and break above, or if you move up, retrace, consolidate, and break down below, that's how you can spot a potential reversal. So just to make that a little bit clearer and simpler for you guys, right, we have this move down and ultimately we're going to be bearish below this level of 3122 because if we can't get above that level, we could potentially continue the downtrend and try to put in a new low, right, with the move down retracement continuation lower. But if we are able to move up and consolidate around these areas and break through those retracement levels, that's when we can get the reversal and potentially come back up. Now, you need to be cautious around that 33 area because we do have a supply zone there. And what you want to make sure is we don't put in a double top with the top here and then a top somewhere around here and get a nice rejection and continue heading lower, right? That would put in a little bit of, um, you know, again, a double top, right, with a top here and then a top over here. If we do get that breakout above our FIB level, essentially what you would look for is, you know, a move up, a breakout and a retest of this area, flip it to support and then push higher to potentially head up to the 35 to 36 dollar region. OK, um, that's what I'm looking at from a technical standpoint. Also, if you take a look at the RSI here, this is your relative strength index. And you can see we keep rejecting this one specific level over here, multiple times over here as well, over here, 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 here. And here we're testing it now again. So I think if we can get above 5641 and stay above there on the relative strength index, um, I do think that we could potentially see a breakout and try to head up to that $32, $33 region when it comes to LUV. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Um, and I do actually have a uh, trade ideas video. This is one of the stocks in that trade ideas video. Um, but there's many other stocks right now that have some decent setups. Uh, if you guys are interested, feel free to click on that video here.